Does anyone want to guess where I got a lot of the footage and the, um, the archival photos from? Okay, from the blank stairs, I'll just go ahead <laughs> and tell you. So some of it was local. So some of it came from the Grandview Library. They have like a big um, archive of like, you know, old photos of the history of Columbus. And some of it actually came from the University of Notre Dame. So Jeff Lean, the, the author that I interviewed, he, he wrote this whole book about Mildred Burke, the first women's world wrestling champion. And he was like, if you're really serious about researching women's wrestling, you need to go to the University of Notre Dame. So I went there. I mean, they just had tons and tons of like banker's boxes of stuff that had never been open, that had been like sitting for decades. There was a wrestling promoter named Jack Pfeffer. I call him an organized pack rat because he saved everything, like press clippings, letters back and forth to him and the women. Um, so, I mean, there was just tons of stuff. So all that, I mean, that, the, the, the photos and stuff that you saw in that little 30 minute version is just like a small um, percentage of the stuff that's, that, that, that's in the University of Notre Dame archive. So it was really interesting just kind of delving into all that stuff. Have you guys had time to uh, if you have some questions or anything that struck you about the women of that era or the, the fact that this, you know, this phenomenon took place in Columbus and now nobody really knows about it? Yeah. Do you think that um, since there wasn't that many records of it, mm -hmm. she might have added a few things and made her sound a little bit better? You're talking about the women kind of pumping themselves up to. I don't, I don't think that's the case. I think if anything, they were kind of like more humble than, than what they were. Because even, I mean, there was a clip in the, in the extended version of the documentary where Ramona says Ethel was like always like the top black star. So I mean, there were, there were dozens of women, there were dozens of black women, but Ethel really was recognized as the top black female wrestler at that time. So, you know, wrestling is all about boasting. It's just like, you know, being a rapper. I mean, you don't go out there and, you know, humbly <laughs> say, I'm gonna tear your head off. I mean, you have to have confidence to get into the, the ring in front of thousands of people. So, it, like I said, if anything, they were, they were more humble than, and the, the guy, the, um, the black guy with kind of the, the shoulder length curly hair, he's actually a wrestling fan in Detroit. And he, he somehow, when the Dispatch article, I think he must've read it online, he contacted me, was like, can you um, introduce me to Ethel Johnson? I was a fan of hers back when I was a teenager. And I was like, well, I'm not going to guarantee you that she's gonna wanna meet you, but I'm working on this documentary and would you be willing to talk about your, you know, your impressions as a wrestling fan? And you know, his, his impressions of Ethel was, and, the, and her sisters was like, they were really amazing. I didn't know they were sisters. They were like the Venus and Serena of their time. The Washington Post actually, um, when, I, when I had a screening of this at the Wexner Center at Ohio State, because that's where I did a lot of the, the post-production, the editing and stuff, um, the Washington Post wrote an article and they interviewed Ramona and the headline was Hidden Figures of Wrestling and that's really what they are. I don't know if any of you saw the movie Hidden Figures about the black women that were, um, that were instrumental in the, in the first moon launch, um, but you know, their story kind of faded into obscurity. And I don't think anyone would say, oh, you know, that's some story that nobody would care about. Um, these women are the same. Unfortunately, I think a lot of the reason why these women's stories are not better known is because the women themselves then once they retired it was kind of like that was my old life uh, there was a clip in the extended version of the documentary where ethel says she didn't even tell her children she was a wrestler she would just go off for a couple weeks at a time and leave them with a babysitter or whatever and her daughter um her daughter shelly tells this story where she and her friends were playing um you know in front of the tv set and one of her friends is like isn't that your mom on tv and it, would, it just happened to be a wrestling match was on TV. That's how she found out her mom was a wrestler. But even when her mom came home from the wrestling trip, she was like, her mom still didn't want to talk about it. And Ethel said that she didn't tell her children she was a wrestler because they, she was afraid that they wouldn't be able to like concentrate in school. They'd be worried that you know, she was going to get beat up. Sometimes she'd come home with like her arm in a sling or whatever. And, and plus, there was this whole section about the racism that they encountered. And a lot, you know, a lot of the women, there was one woman I approached named Lula Mae Provo that I, she didn't even want to be interviewed because I think a lot of them had some really painful experiences with racism so they didn't even want to like reopen that wound. 